Today in this episode, <laughs> there is nothing audio or music related uh, content because I ran into some kind of problem with uh, the German gasoline. You like rock and roll? You like rock and rock? All right! <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know you guys in the uh, United States, but uh, I think you guys are paying around one dollar seventy something cent per gallon for gasoline now here in europe we pay almost two dollar per liter but what we get for this price it's uh, not the same like what you guys get in the united states because here in germany we get uh, something extra inside in a gasoline <laughs> and this extra is a kind of orange colored gushmoo something something which is really really ugly and really corrosive. So this bike it's lived uh, for almost uh, 10 years in Hungary but not in Germany. And in Hungary I never had an issue with the gasoline or with corrosion or something else. But here in Germany, <laughs> the story is totally different. Eh? It doesn't matter which brand you choose, Aral, Egyp, Shell, whatever. The story is the same always. Last year I drove my bike around August or September, something like this, uh, to my garage. And I was so stupid because I forgot <laughs> inside this really high quality, absolutely German professional gasoline in my motorbike. So what's happened? This is the main jet uh, from my carburetor. After the cleaning, huh? I hope you can see, but there is a lot of corrosion and uh, really ugly stuff inside. And believe me, <laughs> you see this uh, tiny uh, air mixer holes here? It was full with gunk, it was full with corrosion, with, uh, you know, this uh, green uh, copper oxide something something. This bike is, uh, is lived in my garage. So I cannot say this corrosion is came from water or from rain or snow or whatever. Let me show you the main jet itself and I hope you guys can see it, but you see this really ugly corrosion inside and outside where is the thread and the same story is going on here but fortunately uh, this uh, mixer pipe I cleaned out uh, really well so now I just have a really small amount of oxidation but only around the thread and then nothing is inside the inside are already polished up like uh, this uh, mixer uh, tube here so this is the situation <laughs> with the German gasoline Mm -hmm. After uh, August, sept September, October, no, after after five months, unbelievable. And this story is not ended here. Let me show you something really, really ugly. This is the gasket 
from the carburetors, yeah? And uh, I replaced this gasket uh, three years ago, so they're not so old, eh? and uh, this was original Suzuki uh, part. But lo look at this. It's, it's, it's gone. It's, it's totally... <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's gone. It, it, it's completely gone. Let me show you other small but really important part of this uh, Kahin uh, CVK carburetor. With this pilot screw, you can adjust the fuel mixture for your engine. So if any kind of uh, air leakage is happening here on the bottom, yeah, and then doesn't matter what you're doing with this, maybe in one uh, moment <laughs> the mixture is good, but later on, let's say after five minutes or ten minutes, the, all of your fuel mixture adjustment is just is just gone because the air can leak into this uh, adjustment uh, pin hole. Let me show you this small rubber ring. The story is the same, like with the gasket. Eh? Unbelievable! Look at this. So it's completely. It's, it's, it's gone, it's, it's, it's destroyed. And I'm telling you guys, I never had this issue in the past. <sighs> what I have here is an um, aftermarket uh, uh, gasket uh, carburetor repair set. This is containing, the, of course, the big uh, gasket, the fuel needle, and this small rubber ring for the pilot uh, screw. But I still have a lot of work on a carburetor. Yeah, not a lot because I made uh, most of it so the boring part, the, you know, the, the cleaning and the, the blasting out with the air, it's, it's already done. And uh, most of the parts I already polished up, up and I cleaned them. If you believe or not, but the damage by the corrosion is so big, so the whole size, the diameter of this uh, tiny pin hole in the middle of the main jet is changed. I have a very small spatial measurement pin that I can uh, plug into the middle and then on a the side I can read the exact uh, diameter of these uh, tiny small holes. So this uh, Suzuki 650 Bandit from 2005 it's using two size uh, for a main jet, 102 and uh, the other one is 105. And this is the 105 and I measured it with these uh, die pins and now this is 107 and the 102 is 104 and uh, so <laughs> I hope you can understand what's going on with the corrosion and with this uh, tiny small holes because you know the corrosion it's half part metal and half part uh, oxides or whatever. So when you remove the oxidation from your uh, copper parts, of course, you will take away copper also, not only the copper oxide. So now these uh, holes are much more bigger than it should be. So what is this? This is a very simple jet kit for Kahin uh, carburetors and the most important part is this M5 because the Suzuki GFS uh, 650S engine is using the Kahin carburetors with M5 treated uh, uh, jets. So this set is containing uh, many different size. So in this set I have one piece of 105 and one piece of 102. But I ordered two set, so now I have all the main jets what I need. This is a really nice kit for a good money because for the whole kit you just have to pay uh, 18 euro or 18 dollar. But if you want to buy uh, jets alone, you have to pay for it uh, 9 euro per piece. Let me show you other rubber parts <laughs> in this uh, fuel line. Eh? Huh? So everything is, is just destroyed. It's, it's completely destroyed. L look, look at this. Unbelievable. I don't know what's going on here, but I've never seen something like this. And uh, those pipes are not so old because I replaced them uh, 
four years ago, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, of course, <laughs> the compressor is just started, oh my god. Okay, until the compressor is finishing, uh, let me show you the most uh, important tools for this job. A Red Bull, a muffin <laughs> from my friends, few chocolate and of course cigarette. <laughs> By the way, never smoke around your carburetor if you are dealing with gasoline, eh? <laughs> of course. <laughs> What a nice day. <sighs> Let me show you other kind of uh, nasty effect of this uh, German professional gasoline. I replaced uh, this filter exactly one year ago. So I used uh, this filter for two months, something like this in the last summer. And this is how it looks like. Huh? And uh, this is the color what I find inside in a carburetor everywhere compared to the new one. Huh? Unbelievable. Let's move forward. Let me see what's going on with the floating needle. Uh, this air compressor. What I'm looking for now is some sort of indentation on this rubber cone. But uh, this is uh, this is looks okay, but doesn't matter because I got a new one with this uh, with this set. If this uh, rubber part here, it's in a good condition, of course you can uh, plug it back, no problem. But it looks to me like ninety percent of the condition. But you know, I'm not trust anymore on any rubber parts in this carburetor after this uh, nasty gasoline. Let me take out the slow gen, which is here on the side of the main gen. I did uh, this special sojo for this kind of works and um, as you see this part is short, make sure I can turn of course uh, the vice grip, but this end it's, it's a bigger so I can drop here uh, small tools or parts or whatever or chemicals and uh, this is a really nice uh, <laughs> small uh, workbench let's call it like this huh? so this is a angled pin but the end it's a bit uh, it's about one millimeter not more and it's kind of sharp but not fully fully sharp make sure uh, I cannot damage uh, uh, parts in a carburetor. So this tool is perfect to take out of course this very small rubber ring from here which is living deeply inside where is the pilot screw okay so with this tool you can take out easily but this is also a good tool to take out this uh, slow jet very very easily huh? just like this Ah, this is a really nice uh, brush <laughs> from the tomb, which is the same like uh, Harbor Freight <laughs> in the United States. It's our El Chipo uh, <laughs> tool shop. And um, this one, it's a very good uh, brush for carburetor work because it's made from copper, a kind of hardened copper. So this will not damage these uh, tiny copper parts at all, but it will remove uh, the oxidations and uh, of course a few parts from my finger, <laughs> but who cares. And uh, with this, uh, this is a really nice, uh, really hard uh, copper uh, wire here. So this one I can use to clean out the hole, of course, really gently, including the air mixer hose, which is on the side of this uh, uh, slow jet. I can drop it back. Uh, let me fix it back. Yeah, just a really tiny, gently torque. Okay. So now I want to clean out this part. So this is where the floating uh, needle is going in. The needle is looks okay. Yeah. So the rubber cone on the top, it looks okay, but some while this needle is just, it's just not moving completely freely. It's a, it's had some kind of 
resistance, okay? What is this? This is a really nice uh, a compound with about 15,000 grid size. You just have to cut this end, yeah? Goodbye. And then you have to go inside with this compound into here and uh, turn it like crazy. And uh, in this way, and on this way you can polish sharp completely the bottom of this valve, huh? you can see, and you get a good result if you get this uh, <laughs> small nipple on the middle and you, you see this black gunk here, so this is the removed oxides and uh, copper by this uh, compound. Yeah, it looks nice now. It's really shiny, the bottom, but I have to apply a bit uh, more and uh, run a bit on the side, so I will push the driller uh, to the side like this. Then, yeah, mm -hmm. now we're talking. Yeah, <laughs> this is the amount of uh, copper oxide what is removed. Now I just have to remove the remains from the compound. A bit of uh, alcohol and I just uh, do like this. And now this part is clean. And uh, yeah, it looks nice and uh, shiny. Time to drop in the new one. So this is the new one, and this is the old one, which is uh, seated inside in this uh, German gasoline. Eh? You know, there is uh, this small spring the pin on the middle. On the old one, this one is also not moving easily or smoothly. But on the new one, of course, everything is just, yeah, it's just uh, perfect. Eh? Yeah, look at this. Here you can see the level of oxidation. Eh? <laughs> it has a, some kind of uh, really ugly yellowish uh, oxid uh, layer on it. Unbelievable. Uh, you know what? Let me run just really gently, really softly with this uh, copper brush. And then you will see the difference, eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, now it's now it's shiny. Ta-da! You see? Of course, I checked uh, these uh, floating drums in a water, make sure I don't have any kind of leakage from these uh, plastic drums. And uh, fortunately, nothing. Let me drop in with the new pinny and that's it okay yeah <laughs> i hope you can hear the difference and you know what i can show you here is my microphone new odd <laughs> okay, now is the time to install back the pilot screw. But of course I wanna clean this up also a bit, so take a bit of compound from here, okay, to this uh, napkin. Ah, look at this. <laughs> Unbelievable, eh? Let me show you the difference between the German gasoline <laughs> damaged O-ring and the new one. So this one is the new one really nice and shiny and small and uh, the cross section is circular. Meanwhile this one, which is not so old, eh, it's completely flat, damaged and uh, it's just... Uh, uh. What? The castle of... Uh. What is dead? He must have died while carving it. Oh, come on. Well, that's what it says. Look, if he was dying, he wouldn't bother to carve arg. He'd just say it. 
Well, that's what's carved in the rock. Perhaps it was dictating. Oh, shut up. Well, does it say anything else? No. Just... Ah! By the way, this is a really simple test, what you also have to do with your carburetor, always. And... Uh, uh, it's even... even no, it's, it, it cannot hold. Uh, if everything is okay with your uh, small rubber ring around your pilot screw, then of course uh, it can hold these uh, small springs. Now I have to drop back this into the pilot screw hole, which is here, okay, and it's a really easy job. Just drop it in. And now is the time to apply the preset, what the Suzuki said in a service manual. They said the preset is two turn back from the bottom, so... Half a turn, one, one and a half, and two. Nice. So Suzuki said in a service manual, the two middle carburetor must be 102, and the two side carburetor it must be 105. So the side cylinders, they are always much more colder than the two in the middle. Of course, uh, Suzuki did a lot of other tricks uh, with the oil cooling system to make sure these temperature differences are not so big. So, I don't know if you know this trick, but this one you can turn into the microscope. <laughs> Let me show you. What you have to do, it's very simple. Turn it, yeah, and extend it to the maximum and then point the viewport <laughs> to the part and have a look on the other side. I think it has a magnification like 20 times, so it's far away enough to read uh, these very small Japanese numbers on it. So uh, yes, this is a 105. Okay, just tighten up a bit. Yeah, I think it's enough. Okay, so with this carburetor, we're almost done. Let me continue with the next two carburetors. Just do the same job. And now is the time to check something really important, but almost nobody is doing it. We have to measure two things on this carburetor. One is the position sensor here, okay? If it's working perfectly. And the other one is this throat uh, preheaters. They must be around uh, 32 ohm, something like this. I hope you guys can see the multimeter. And it's showing me 34, it's okay. 35, it's okay. 35, okay. No, it, it's good. So 34. Okay, now I will measure the uh, position sensor. So what you have to measure, if everything is good, you have to measure on a minimum position around 1K and on a maximum position, of course, uh, 5K. But on these two pin, you must to measure uh, 5K. So what I will do now, I just will spray inside a bit of uh, VD40, okay? So try to aim uh, to, to this uh, section here, where is this uh, edge. Around the sensor, Check this also because this also can be damaged by the rain. You see this surface here on your carburetor, okay? Any kind of dent or small holes or scratches or whatever can cause a leakage. This edge, they're pretty flat. So I think uh, the, the flatness of this surface here, it's, uh, it's in a one micron uh, meter of course. So what you can do, you just need a really strong light source from the side and then you drop it uh, like this on it and then you have to look uh, from the side. So if you see any kind of uh, light is escaping on the edge, eh, of course, then you know you have to uh, work on this uh, surface a bit and um, the best way to do it's actually pretty simple. Uh, hold this end, okay? So now you will use the edge of this um, 
blade. Uh, the edge is also kind of precise, but uh, I use a new one, of course. So what you have to do, just drop it here into the middle where is the pilot screw, yeah? Dr just drop it here and really slightly, really gently just turn this blade around and then move your uh, pivot point to here, okay? Make sure you can turn this blade in every direction really slowly and then you have to go to this point where is the screw hole okay and just gently move this blade like this and then do the same here just a tiny bit and here the same just a tiny bit okay so then next pivot point and then this pivot point so this will not uh, uh, straight up your surface here, but uh, with this method you will get a very tiny, uh, shiny scratches, small scratches on this uh, gasket surface. So then from that you can see where the carburetor body itself is distorted, you know, because this one is a casted uh, part, so it's not a CNC machined part and the original surface here, it's even not machined. It's, it's how it came from this really uh, precise uh, casting. So with this method, you can make this uh, uh, gasket surface here really flat with a tiny bit of uh, work, so then you will see when is uh, the problems and uh, uh, you have to continue this work around equally. So if you do here uh, uh, five scratch, you must do here also five scratch. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, really gently, really gently, just like this. So um, now I see here really shiny uh, scratches so how I can polish up this surface even more you can make the surface really smooth and, and, and really flat with a really simple trick you just need a piece of uh, nice hardwood okay which is flat on a both on both of the side or and then you have to drop on it a piece of uh, sandpaper uh, let's say around 400 grid or 360 grid something like this you must be flat like this okay and then just came here and do really small cleaning uh, action just like this go around and of course you have to do this really gently and don't work too much on one area at all, okay? Just, just a tiny bit. Most of the time I find uh, this part here behind the, the main jet and between the uh, pilot uh, screw, this is the part where this uh, Kahin carburetors, they have a bit of dent. I don't know why, it's maybe uh, because of the casting, but with this method, of course, you can uh, you can easily flat this out and uh, then of course you will get a really nice uh, shiny and flat uh, surface but you can check the flatness if you did a good job then of course this uh, permanent marker it stay almost everywhere eh? by the way this is not so critical surface because you know you have this uh, rubber uh, o-ring but there is one more really really important uh, uh, surface what you have to check okay in carburetors they cast it on a way this one here it's flat okay but this part this one here it's a bit uh, concave upward but in few cases many wrong uh, <laughs> repair guys 
the, the tiling up uh, the screws on the bottom of the carburetor so hardly they bend this part okay of the carburetor so how you can check this one way of course to drop here a straight edge okay and just uh, have a look uh, with the light but there is a much more simpler way to do this you just drop the bottom part of the carburetor to here without uh, the o-ring yeah so without the gasket uh, just metal on metal then you just have to push down with your two finger on this end okay and if uh, if you have this uh, play here let's say about uh, half a millimeter or one millimeter then you are okay but if you push this one this end this must be flat if i push it down here then i easily can go under okay but if i push down this side uh, no way eh? okay next step is to prepare the bottom part of your carburetor so you must to clean out this uh, area here uh -huh. completely clean out because any kind of small something something inside here can cause a lot of uh, leakage so now is the time to drop back the o-ring don't apply nothing on it eh? if this o-ring is uh, became flat replace it okay but i will not install back this one now because i have to check the uh, uh, floating uh, level here which is a bit weird <laughs> in a service manual they're saying uh, you have to turn the carburetor upside down but then they <laughs> messed up uh, the text i think <laughs> around the translation because uh, this part is missing uh, from the service manual so again yeah do like this 20 degree and then all of your uh, fuel valve must be closed yep it's closed but <clears throat> you have to measure something let me let me show you i, I told you it's not easy eh? so you have to set up your caliper exactly to 70 millimeter or in inch it's 669 tau something like this <laughs> but it's much more easier on millimeter of course so 70 millimeter and this is the height that you have to compare to the height of the floating drums okay compared to the bottom part of the carburetor body so it's not not an easy task again 20 degree and uh, this must be 17 millimeter you have to blow air into here okay with a tiny compressor or even with your mouth it's it's far away okay and then you have to start from this position and slowly slowly turn your carburetor like this okay and then you have to hear the air came out from the, all the four carburetor in the same time and then you know you did a good job now let me do the trick it's really simple Mm -hmm. I think this one it's uh, opening a bit earlier than the tree but this tree is opening exactly on the same time but let me check the close uh, for uh, check the close you have to do of course reverse so you start from here and then you turn the carbs like this but yeah on a closing uh, this tree is going together so this tree and this is closing a bit uh, uh, later eh? looks to me it's okay there is a really tiny tiny differences okay i think i'm done with uh, the carburetor let me pick up the camera 
and show you guys the rest of the parts what I have to uh, drop on my bike. Here is the new brake discs from Braking, a very good company, much more cheaper than a Brembo, what I have on it. Uh, this one is cost uh, 140 euro per piece and uh, the Brembo is cost uh, 300 euro per piece. So this is a uh, new steel ropes, okay, for the curb. Uh, this is a new steel rope uh, for the couplung. Uh, this is a really nice uh, NGK Iridium IX. Uh, spark plugs. I never use them, but I read something, something about them for the summer time usage, eh? because this is iridium and it can go up to much more higher uh, temperature and it's much more stable. This one it's a um, <laughs> really weird uh, gummy <laughs> rubber <laughs> plastic part for the for the clutch uh, handle. Mm, yeah, uh, my one is already dead uh, because of the age. Ah, by the way, this uh, NGK Iridium IX uh, spare plugs, they're they expensive, so it's like uh, 48 euro, the four piece. But this company <laughs> did a mistake, so they sent me <laughs> an extra pack of <laughs> really expensive uh, NGK uh, spark plugs, I don't know. New brake pads, it's made in the UK and this is organic. Um, I tried uh, this sintered metal brake pads and uh, they're horrible on a Bandit. You know, the Bandit has a uh, a really nice feeling on a, on a brake, so you easily can feel uh, how much uh, force you need uh, to do a proper um, stop with your bike. And this one is um, is uh, is the best for that. So that give you this really uh, nice uh, feedback from your brake, brake force gasket set for. Uh, the exhaust system because here in Germany if you touch your exhaust system and uh, they have a really sensitive uh, tools to measure the CO2 and uh, nitrogen dioxide something 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 and uh, if you have a problem with your exhaust system you just screwed up you can go home and you have to pay again of course uh, all the fees for the exam. So <laughs> this one is cost only 8 euro, something like this. But the new exam here in Germany, it's about 180 euro. New feet holders for the front. Okay, because yeah, they are weird out. You know, it's from the normal usage. Uh, this rubber part is just, is go away. New high flow air flea filter pipes and of course the new filter and the new oil filter and the new oil the oil is uh, somewhere there uh, maybe you can see and the uh, new exhaust system i hope you guys enjoyed see you next time bye